Dr. Benita Rattan and this channel is dedicated to skincare for skin of colour. So I'm a doctor but I'm also a cosmetic formulator and so I love doing deep dive investigations into ingredients and telling you whether or not they're suitable for our skin. So majority of products on the market right now were really designed for Caucasian skin. The reason being that Caucasian skin you can actually be a lot more aggressive with and you can actually burn the full top layer of skin and the skin will still be fine. With us, one bite, one burn, one scratch and we hyperpigment. So we just need to be a lot more educated with our skincare. We have to be a lot more careful with what we put on our skin. Okay, so today we are talking about Cetaphil and you guys have asked me for Cetaphil a lot. I think it's a global brand actually. And so all everyone who follows this channel actually is from all over the world. And, and so hopefully this will be beneficial for everybody. So let's dive right in. Let's start with the first product, which is their Gentle Skin, skin Cleanser. Okay, so I'm, I was actually quite surprised. It's quite a short ingredients list. So here they've got water, which is a solvent. They've got cetyl alcohol emollient, which softens the cells. This is a good alcohol, a fatty alcohol, not denatured alcohol. Um, it's got propylene glycol, which is moisturizing to the skin. It's very good. It's also got parabens in it. Now, I know you're thinking, Dr. V, you're going to calm it down hard on parabens. No, parabens are so good for us. They're the best preservative that we have. Okay. And what's happened is this rumor or this myth took place that said parabens were bad for us based on studies which uh, are comp you, you can't compare with the percentages that we use. We use about 1% um, for cosmetics. So what ended up happening is we started using, or other people started using alternatives to parabens. And actually the incidence of contact dermatitis went up because of this switch. So it's much better to use products that have parabens in them than an alternative. So a fun fact, um, the big brands will then look at these myths and incorporate them into their culture in order to boost sales. So for example, Kiehl's um, actually removed parabens from their ultra facial cream and experienced extra sales of $5 million. So that just goes to show you the power of myths. So the seventh ingredient here is sodium laurel sulfate, uh, which is really not ideal for acne as it can be quite commodogenic. It does strip the skin of oil um, and usually really we require this at about four to five percent. But here it's actually less than this off the preservatives, which means that it's at less than a percent. So it's not even that effective. Plus, it's not very good for sensitive skin, which is odd because this is a gentle skin cleanser It's designed to be gentle and for inflamed skin. I would have preferred sodium laurel sulfate rather than sodium laurel sulfate. Um, so it's just odd. I don't know why they chose to do that. So I think it, it's, it's a fine um, cleanser, but I think if you've got acne, oily prone skin, it might not suit you. The next product is Cetaphil Oily Skin Cleanser. I was quite surprised because don't forget, acne prone skin is inflamed skin. That's what free fatty acids are doing to your skin, is inflaming the skin. And so the positives here are, they've got glycerin, it's got butylene glycol. It's also got sodium laureth sulfate, so it's a more gentle surfactant, which is good. It's got sodium laurel sarcosinate, which is non-irritating, um, is non-sensitizing up to about 15% on a wash-off product. So again, it seems fine. But then they went and added seven fragrances. I'm sure you already know this because I'm hoping you've watched a few of my videos by now, but fragrance is the number one cause of contact dermatitis. It is a co-sensitizer. So after years of wearing it, you can start getting reactions and then reactions also to the other ingredients in that particular product. So I know it's a wash off because it's a cleanser, but I mean, it's just, it's just unnecessary. It's got amyl cinnamol in it. It's got benzol, benzoate in it. It's got citronellol. It's got geraniol. It's got linalool. It's got perfume. Like they literally, it's like a whole perf perfume shop, I think, in this one product. So I don't know. It's just strange. Like why? You know, the product's not going to smell bad with every, all the, the ingredients that they've actually chosen. So it's, it's just, it's actually just pandering to consumers, but consumers want the best for their skin you know that's why 
people want to get educated that's people why you guys are hopefully watching this channel is to learn what's best for your skin so i do think it will change i do think there'll be more fragrance free lines as more brands watch our channels but right now i don't i don't really know why they made this decision okay so the next product here is cetaphil daily defense moisture spf 50 so the positives are it has a lot of moisturizers and emollients which i love it's got alkali benzoate it's got glycerin it's got dimethicone it's got propylene glycol positives our sunscreens are mainly chemical if you like chemical um then it's good chemical i'm not a big fan of it does accumulate in your bloodstream and it's not great if you have melasma in fact i would always say wear physical and in fact I wear physical on my own skin and I only put physical on my own children so I'm, I'm not a fan you can watch my videos I've got lots one on chemical versus physical and I've got one on my top three physical sunscreens and also kids sunscreens you should watch if you have children okay so the other positives are it's got methyl paraben pro paraben so again the best preservative which I'm really happy about it's got no fragrance in it no alcohol which I love the only negative is got myristyl myristate in it which is an emollient but it's about five out of ten on the commodogenic scale so this is a very good chemical sunscreen for people who don't have acne. I, that's, that's the type of person that this particular product would suit. Okay, so moving on to the next product, which is their Cetaphil Moisturizing Lotion. So the positive here, they actually have a lot of good emollients, which I love. They've got glycerin, they've got hydrogenated polyisobutene, they've got persea oil, they've got dimethicone, panthenol, the solvent they've used is water, which is good. So no alcohol, there's no fragrance. So they're doing very well by this at this point. It's very gentle, non-commodogenic. Um, so I would say buy this for the body. I mean, they've got the basics right. After all the brands that I've reviewed who've who've got the basics wrong i mean when i see someone who actually gets the basics right i'm like yay go buy it so yeah definitely this one is fine this is going to suit your skin you're going to have no issues the next product is the cetaphil body cream okay so again the positives are very good at getting the moisturizers in which i love so they've got glycerin they've got propylene glycol they've which are basically the humectin so it's like a water magnet so it will sit in the epidermis and I'll draw water into it and so you feel hydrated in your skin which is really important okay so they've got a ton of emollients which I love and that basically is almost like a cover it occludes the area to trap water in the epidermis to prevent it evaporating from the skin so here they've got petrolatum they've got dimethicone they've got glycerol stearate they've They've, they've got quite a few so i'm i'm very happy with the formula i think it's fine even for inflamed skin um for sensitive skin uh, it's non-commodogenic so it's good for acne prone skin it's got no fragrance in it so i'm very happy i'd say probably the only downside with this product is it is very basic there aren't any actives in it it's basically just a moisturizer that's not going to irritate your skin but honestly, after all the brands that I've reviewed, like I'm just happy when they when they get a really good moisturizer right and there's nothing in it that's gonna irritate skin of color and cause us to have pigmentation. So I'd say definitely go and purchase that product. So if you haven't downloaded your free guide to skincare for skin of color, make sure you do it. I put a lot of love into it. So the link is down below. It's all the ingredients that you should and shouldn't be wearing for your skin. If you've got any questions, please can you write them down below or any brands you want me to review that I haven't done already, please can you write them down. Any skincare issues that you have, write them down again and I will try it and make those videos for you um, please do know that i'm in the comment section for one hour at the launch of every single video which means i um, hit that notification bell and subscribe so that you know you know when i'm there and i can help you live thank you very much for listening i really appreciate it